1590 WAKR. And it's time to bring him in. Film produced study professor Joe Fortunato. As we go to film school with Joe Fortunato. And he's going to go back to today, back to 1978, for a premiere of a huge movie globally and right here in the country and i'll let joe take it from there good morning joe take it good morning ray good morning everybody and yes i'm, I'm very excited about this one in fact i'm going to consider this sort of my christmas present to myself <laughs> we are going to uh look at the 45th anniversary of superman the movie uh which was released today december 15th 1978 uh and uh it's uh it, just, it was directed by richard donner it was written by Mario Puzo, who, who uh, wrote The Godfather. Also written by David Newman and Leslie Newman, who wrote Barney and Clyde. Of course, it stars uh, Christopher Reeve, Gene Hackman, Arlen Brando, Margot Kidder. It won an Oscar for Special Achievement of Visual Effects. It had three nominations for sound, editing, and score. And let me just say up front on a personal note, uh, we've talked about how Jaws is my favorite movie, and that's the answer for favorite movie. But this movie more than any other movie, is the movie that takes me back and captures my childhood. I can sit down and watch it today, and I am transformed to, uh, you know, whatever I was, 10 or 11 years old at the time. Uh, I just love it. In fact, sometimes I'll sit in my home theater and just watch the opening credits and hear John Williams' fantastic score, which actually this is my favorite John Williams score. So uh, I've got a lot to talk about, so I'll just kind of get going here. <laughs> but uh, after its initial run, or on its initial run, I should say, the film topped the box office charts for 13 consecutive weeks. That's what we call legs. Uh, it was the second highest grossing film of 78 behind Greek. So a uh, big one-two punch there. At the time of its release, it was the sixth highest grossing film of all time. It's the only superhero movie that's included in Roger Ebert's great movie series. Mm. The filming was originally meant to be about seven or eight months, but due to all kinds of technical difficulties, it ended up lasting 19 months. So, uh, you know, twice as more than twice as, as long as it was planned. In fact, it was planned for three years, shot in two, uh, at the height of the filming, over a thousand full time crew, uh, spread over three studios in eight countries. Um, it was one of the highest production budgets of any movie at the time. So when you said it was a big film, it indeed was a big film. I'm happy to say that uh, a lot of people probably already know this, but uh, Superman's creators, Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, uh, are right here from Ohio. They grew up in Cleveland. They created Superman. In Cle so Superman's from Cleveland, from Ohio. Uh, they were both delighted with the results of the movie, which is always good to hear. Uh, one of the interesting things is that Steven Spielberg was offered a chance to direct the film. Uh, but the producers balked at his salary that he asked for. They decided to see how a little film uh, called Jaws did, which he had just completed, how it was going to go at the box office. Of course, that was a huge success, and Spielberg went on to other projects. So his, uh, his salary didn't come down after that point. Um, Silverman, of course, was played by Christopher Reeve. And this is, I'll talk about casting in a minute, but this is probably one of the most legendary casting calls of all time, probably this and maybe Scarlett O'Hara for Gone with the Wind. Uh, so many people from all, you know, pretty much every actor in and out of Hollywood uh, was up for the role of Superman. Uh, but to, you know, Chris Perry was just a skinny guy. In fact, that's one of the reasons they didn't think they were going to cast him. Like, oh, he's too skinny. Uh, so he bulked up instead of wearing a muscle suit, which, you know, m most uh, uh, people had done in the past when playing Superman. Uh, he bulked up and to achieve that, he went a bodybuilding regimen supervised by David Prowse. Now, someone would say, well, what's that name? That's the guy who played Darth Vader uh, in Star Wars. So there's mm -hmm. a Star Wars uh, connection there as well. Uh, and uh, he, he trained Christopher Reeve. Well, you mentioned the cast, Joe. I look at the cast of this, and Christopher Reeve is one of them. But you mentioned, I mean, Brando. Hackman, <clears throat> Beatty, Jackie Cooper, Glenn Ford, Trevor Howard, Margot Kidder, Valerie Perrine. I mean, we can go on and on. What a cast was put together for this. Oh, it's unbelievable. I mean, yeah, we're talking about the leads here, but or I'm talking about Christopher Reeve specifically. But, yeah, the whole entire cast from top to bottom was just a who's who uh, of great actors. And uh, Lynn Stallmaster, I want to give him a shout-out. He was the casting director, legendary casting director, 
he was the first to suggest Christopher Reeve for the role. Uh, and as I mentioned, Richard Donner and the Falcons, the producers, thought he was too young and too skinny. Uh, but, uh, you know, I said he bulked up for that. Um, there were numerous actor, actors considered for the part of Superman and Clark Kent. And, uh, yeah, I'll just give you a set, some of them because okay. I couldn't do the whole list. But some of these are interesting. The first one, Muhammad Ali, oh. uh, that was uh, who had a song called The Black Superman, uh, Warren Beatty, uh, Charles Bronson, James Caan. Dustin Hoffman, Burt Reynolds, uh, Chris Christopherson, Nick Nolte, Al Pacino, Redford, Schwarzenegger, who was not a big star at that time, uh, Ryan O'Neill, uh, Christopher Walken, Superman, okay. Uh, <laughs> and, and here we go, Elton John. Oh. Um, so what, what's crazy, and probably, and I could go on and on, uh, probably the weirdest one, uh, someone who uh, wanted to, who was pushing to play Superman, Neil Diamond. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, this is crazy. Now, Paul Newman was offered the choice to play Superman, Lex Luthor, or Jor-El, uh, and he wasn't interested in any of them. Redford, Eastwood, and James Kahn were all offered the movie's title role. All three turned it down. Uh, Kahn said, I'm not getting in that silly suit. <laughs> so, and for the villains of Lex Luthor, uh, some considerations were George Kennedy, Gene Wilder. Uh, that would have been interesting, actually. Uh, and Jack Nicholson. Now, of course, a decade later, he would play the Joker to some great accolades yeah. and fame. So I'm almost curious what uh, Nicholson would have done with, with Lex Luthor. Uh, some of the actresses for Lois Lane were Ann Archer, uh, Leslie Ann Warren, Stockard Channing, who, of course, did Grease that same year. Mm -hmm. uh, Joan Crawford was approached to play Ma Kent, wow. uh, but she was uh, too ill to take the part. Um, Peter Boyle. The great Peter Boyle, who around that time had done Young Frankenstein, he was, and many know him later in life as a, a dad on Everybody Loves Raymond. He was uh, auditioned to play the part of Otis, Lex Luthor's uh, bumbling sidekick. So, uh, you know, again, I could go on and on. Uh, Sylvester Stallone lobbied hard to play the role. So it's it's really crazy how that went. Joe Fortunato, the movie is Superman, made its premiere this date. 1978. <laughs> Joe, before I let you go, because I know we could go on probably up until well, I do have a couple more things I want to share, but go ahead. Yeah, please go ahead. I was just going to say, 1978, it did well at the box office. It had a big budget, but man, it really brought in the dollars as well. Yeah, it did. It was, like I said, it was, uh, uh, it was the sixth highest grossing film of all time at the time. Uh, we were talking about uh, some of the big names in the cast uh, that actually were in the cast. Marlon Brando was paid $3.7 million plus a percentage of the gross for just 12 days of shooting. Um, and he was uh, notoriously lazy as an actor. I know Brando fans might not want to hear that, but uh, uh, he would uh, uh, have his, he would only do one take and say, that's it, let's do it. Uh, he would put his lines in the, in the uh, set somewhere hidden so that he could see he did that in Godfather as well. Uh, so that was uh, uh, Christopher Reeve one time said, in an interview that Brando was just phoning it in as it shows, uh, which is, you know, kind of sad about Brando. But yeah. uh, uh, one other thing that's kind of interesting is that Mar it was Marlon Brando's idea to have Jor-El wear the same S symbol on his clothes that Kal-El would later wear as Superman. Uh, and since that, that was originally in the film, and since that, that has sort of been incorporated in the Superman lore that the S symbol is a Kryptonian family crest from the House of L. Um Speaking of House of El, uh, Superman is descended from the House of El. In Hebrew, El means God, and it's derived from the root word meaning might, strength, and power. And, of course, uh, Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, the, the, um, the creators of Superman, were both young Jewish boys, so uh, there's some significance there. Uh, Clark, or, uh, Christopher Reeve uh, patterned his—we talk about him being Superman, but he's so great as Clark Kent, and he patterned his Clark Kent— after Cary Grant in Bringing Up Baby. And if you watch those two, you can absolutely see it. He's, he's just perfect. And, and one final little thing that probably you didn't know, Clark Kent and Superman, they part their hair on opposite sides. Ah, I did not know. I'm going to, boy, you've really intrigued me. I think I'm going back to watch this thing this weekend. I'm going to watch all this stuff. Oh, it's worth it. There you go. Superman from 1978 opened up in the theaters today. December 15th. Film School with film study professor Joe Fortunato with us. Joe, as always, my friend, thanks for the...